Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to make an animation system for your game and specifically for hack and slash game. The animation will control the basic movement like just being idle, running, jumping and also attacking. So let's just jump into it. So first of all the things usually that people ask what type of or what format do you want to export your model to. Um, for me, it works better when I export it to GLTF uh, from Blender, so I just chose that. And this is how it looks if you just uh, imported it, right? So I drag it, so GLB is GLTF binary, I think that's what it stands for. And usually what I do is that I will click this, uh, open an editor, and then click new inherited, and then save this one into a TSCN file format. Why? Because I want to add some notes, edit it, and just do some stuff with it, right? So you need to do that in the beginning. So, with that being said, let's take a look at what I already exported, or save into TSN, that is. So this is the node that already exported it, or imported it, and then save it as a TSN, and then I added a animation tree. So just add this node here, create, and then I renamed it into anim. And then add a tree root here. The, tr uh, the root that I chose is uh, blend tree, node blend tree. Why? So I already tried the um, state machine, but it's just confusing. You know, so you need to connect all these arrows to certain states. And then if you want to combine different states, it's just confusing. So I think it's better for me or it's better looking cleaner, I guess. That's a proper way to say it if I use the animation node blend tree. Okay, so let's talk about the function of uh, each node, right? Uh, the first one is basically this transition node is just to check what state the player are in. So the first checking is that whether the player is in a normal state or attacking state. Then I call the transition is just attack, like stands for attacking or not, right? So you can choose between being in a normal state or like yeah, movement state or attacking state. And then below it, for the normal uh, stance or for the normal state, I have like two also. Do you uh, check whether the player is grounded or not and just call it state. I know it's a little bit confusing the naming convention here, but yeah, I don't know. It's just, I understand it, so I don't, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, so whether the player is grounded or not, if it is grounded, then set this one or set the animation to this one, the base move blend space 1D node. And if it is on, on the air, if the player is on the air, then you can just set it to jump. So it will automatically restart the jump animation and transition from grounded to jump. So let's talk about the blend space 1D or one dimension here. So the base move here, it has a value that you can slide from 0 to 1 or to 2, I guess, you know. But yeah, in the editor, you can actually only slide it to 1. Well, you can just set it into like 2, 3, or so on and so forth. But in this case, 0 to 1 is, works just fine. Why do I choose this uh, node? Because it could slide over, and then you can just uh, play around with the transition. You know, you can set it uh, through the code. So that's why I chose this node. And also, if you have like a transitional animation like maybe if the player moves the joystick halfway then you want a, a walking animation and it sets on 0 0.5 then you can do that and it's more flexible that way so anyway that's the function of this blend uh space 1d oh just in case you don't know how to add a animation node you can just right click and then click the nodes that you want to add and if it is blend space 1d then you can just open the editor and then click on this pencil create points tool and then add animation, animation idle, and then animation running, right? So that's how you add animation to that. Let's just delete that. Next is the uh, attacks. So I want also the attack to be organized well. So you can also like add this node to this one, like, oh, attack one, attack two, attack three, but it's just too confusing, at least to me. So I divided the, or not divided, but I group the attacks to its own transition. Uh, and also it's, you know, if you set it to attack, then it could just go to, you can just cycle through the attack animation. 
you know so it is useful again just add the transition so on and so forth oh i forgot i haven't mentioned how to add the transition uh what is it connector node here so when you add a transition node it will be like this there is no connectors right you can go to inputs and then add elements and then name your connectors here in this case like normal and attack so you can just have those like yeah basically that and then you name your transition maybe like attacking maybe something like that and so that's basically the setup for the animation tree. Now let's take a look at the code itself. And so this is the code and I attached it to the top level of the uh, animation node or the 3D model uh, scene. So it's the same, what is it, scene as the animation uh, tree scene uh, node. So in the top level I attach the code. And it, this is actually the variable or the code that control this uh, node hold on let me scroll a little bit the base move and then the transition state okay like whether the player is on the ground or not so this code is dictate which uh, state that the player in and so the way you access these value or which transition should be changed you can actually go to the uh the in the anim uh, animation tree node and then go to state here like and then you can actually drag this transition request to uh the function right then it will just same like that and in this case i use the function set and then it needs the the path to the value or the what is it the parameters that you want to set and then what do you want to set it to so because transition requests only have to a variable which is grounded in jump that's also what i use here right so it also i think you need to uh, it is case sensitive so if you use like uh caps lock here then you need to put it on the uppercase as well so let's just delete that and this actually goes the same for the attack animation but the attack control i put it on the player kinematic uh node or character node now it's called but basically the same it's just set the state of the player is into attacking and then if it is attacking then set the para these parameters into attack which is this node into attack and then if it is if the state is normal then set it to normal and then i also labeled the attack like this one is attack number one number two and number three as you might see over here so if the attack number equal to one then play the attack light one and then if the attack number equal to two play the attack uh, light two and for heavy attacks it attacks number three and you need to play attack age one so again pay attention that it's actually uh transition uh setting this transition not requesting to play this animation directly it's just actually hey transition to this state and then we will automatically restart the animation and play it so that's basically it on how to make a animation system for your game and this is for hack and slash and that's how i handle it uh let me know what you think about the tutorial itself i know it's a little bit different it's not a full-on tutorial on how to write anything uh everything from scratch but i just want to share how i handle the animation system and i also leave out some all of the details like the transition between the animation you can actually set it but yeah I, th I want you to figure it out by yourself hey don't forget to like and subscribe leave a comment and this is a project that i am working on i know i make a lot of projects but it never goes anywhere but i want you i want your feedback about this should i make this into a full game or whatever you know if i have the time but yeah hey once again thank you so much for watching have a nice day Night. Bye-bye. Thank you.